Hi, and welcome to this level of response buffer question walkthrough. It's from OCR Chemistry A, uh, paper one, um, question 22C from October 2021. So let's have a look at how to read the question to get started. Because if we look, there's quite a lot going on. So let's think about what we have to do. If you look at the uh, sentence at the bottom where it has the instructions, you'll see there's three separate things you've got to do. And they can be dealt with separately. They don't have to be done together. So what I suggest is have your answer split into three subsections. So let's construct our answer with that in mind. So putting the question up in the top left hand corner and making some space, I'm going to put any reasoning and processing I've come up with on the right hand side. So like we said, three sections, why a buffer forms, the pH of the buffer solution and the mass of N2O3 used. So the first thing to do is to look at the information in step two. And it gives you two sets of data, one set of data for sodium hydroxide, and another set of data for HNO2, the acid. So basically you've got two beakers and you mix the contents of one with the contents of the other. They react and you get um, a resulting solution. And it tells you that the resulting solution is made up to one decimeter cubed, hence the bigger beaker. So the first solution for sodium hydroxide, N equals V times C, gives you 0 0.015 moles. Second solution, N equals V times C, gives you 0 0.050 moles. And then finally, you've got uh, one decimeter cubed as the resulting solution, or 1,000 centimeters cubed. So using this information here, we can now work out what's actually going to happen when these two quantities are reacted. So the first thing to do is to construct an equation. You can see that they're equimolar, the sodium hydroxide and the acid. And don't forget, we're also keeping an eye on what happens in terms of the NaNO2, the salt. That's going to be the conjugate base in any buffer that's formed. So looking at the initial moles, taking the values that we've worked out up here and putting them into the equation, we don't have any conjugate base to start with. But this is at the beginning, remember. So the reactants are used up, so we have um, eight NaOH as the limiting reagent. There's a lower number of moles of NaOH than there is of HNO2. So you subtract 0.05 from the starting amount, and you get zero. And you subtract 0.05 from 0.050. That gets the two quantities of NaOH and HNO2 at the end. There's no sodium hydroxide left, because what's happened is it's all ended up over here as NaNO2. So essentially you've got a weak acid in its conjugate base present, so this mixture can act as a buffer. The next stage is to have a look at the, um, the pH of the buffer solution formed. Now it gives you the pKa value of 3.34 and obviously remembering the general buffer calculation, uh, the expression, we put in the concentration terms for the acid and the conjugate base. But remember the resulting solution is made up to a thousand centimeters cubed. So we don't need to convert these values into concentrations, which saves us a bit of work. Now the pKa value is not the same as the Ka value need to do 10 to the minus pKa, so 10 to the minus 3.34 gives you 4.57 times 10 to the minus 4, and you put that into the Ka part of the expression. Like we said, these numbers here can be used as concentrations, so for the HNO2, that goes on the top, and for the NaNO2, that goes underneath, which gives us 1.066 times 10 to the minus 3. Now the next thing we've got is pH equals minus log the hydrogen ion concentration. So that gives us 2.97. Don't forget that um, pHs need to be expressed to two decimal places, so that's an expectation here. Now finally, the mass of N2O3 um, can be worked out from the information up here. That allows us to construct this equation. Now clearly, the number of nitrogens on the left and the number of nitrogens on the right do not match, so therefore we have to double the HNO2 on the right. So we know that the HNO2 is 0.05 moles, so that must mean you've got 0.025 moles of N2O3. So a simple rearrangement of moles equals mass of rem R allows us to, cut, to multiply 0.025 moles times 76 grams per mole to make 1.9 grams of N2O3. Okay, as always, thanks for listening. Until next time, see you soon.